So when I was filming last month's tech tip, the steering box adjustment video, I crawled under the truck to get a decent shot of the steering assembly. And whilst I was under there, I noticed that the outer CV boot on the offside drive shaft had completely split in half. Uh, bummer. But then I thought, well, may as well make a video out of it so it's not all bad. And in actual fact, I think what I'm going to do today is make this a kind of three-parter mini-series. So part one, which you're watching right now, will cover how to remove the drive shaft. Part two will be the reinstallation of said drive shaft. And then I think I'm going to do a separate tech tip video, so number 25, on how to replace the CV boot itself. My intention here is just to make it easier for you guys to access the content that you want without having to skim through one really long video. Let me know what you think, if you like it, if you don't like it, let me know in the comments. Okay, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. All right, you need to replace the CV boot on your drive shaft. Well, be prepared because as with all steering and suspension components that have been subjected to a lifetime of road grime, dirt, water, uh, salt if you're really unlucky, things are gonna put up a fight, I'm not gonna lie. And with this vehicle, to get to the drive shaft, I'm looking at removing the axle nut, the wheel, the entire brake assembly. I need to separate the upper and lower ball joints. Uh, there's the tie rod as well. I'm probably missing some other stuff, but you get the idea. Uh, a lot of stuff needs to be done. But setups do differ somewhat, and there's a good chance a lot of you will be wanting to do this on a front wheel drive car, not a part time 4x4 like the truck is. So you may get lucky and not have to do everything I'm doing in this video, but hopefully it'll give you a good idea of what's involved with this process. So, first up, before I do anything, I'm going to crack the axle nut loose because this is a lot easier with the car on its wheels, provided you have access to it of course it'll be torqued up tight and then it's punched into a groove in the drive shaft itself to stop it backing out so you need to lever that out with a screwdriver or a punch and then grab a big socket 36 millimeter in this case and a big breaker bar and with a bit of elbow grease uh, maybe some leg grease as well it should break loose okay now that's cracked loose I can jack the car up and remove the wheel Right, so with the wheel off, we have a much better view of the front suspension assembly uh, and the drive shaft back here with the offending split boot. Uh, there's still a lot to remove, as you can see, so next up, I'm gonna focus on the brakes. So brake caliper is up first. Uh, I'm just gonna remove this clip here, holding the hose in place, so it gives me a little more slack in the line. My preferred tool for this is a pair of side cutters. So just grab the clip between the jaws, give it a wiggle and it should pull out. like that. Now the hose can be released from its little bracket. So I'm going to remove this as one assembly, the caliper, the bracket uh, and the brake pads. So there's two 19 millimeter bolts back here to undo. They'll be torqued up tight, so give them a good heave. Use the old double spanner technique. Right, with those two bolts out, the caliper can be removed from the disc. Uh, it may need a bit of persuasion to get it off. There we go. Now, it's best not to let these calipers hang by the rubber hose, as it can damage them. So, I've got a cable tie up here. I'm just going to tie this up and out of the way for now. Okay, you should find the brake disc will just pull off the hub now. Uh, if it doesn't, check there's not a retaining screw holding it in place. If there is, you need to remove it. Uh, and if it still won't budge, a sharp blow with a hammer right on the top of the hat here should break loose any corrosion holding it to the hub. So next up is the ABS sensor. 
uh, should be pretty straightforward this just two 12 millimeter bolts holding the wire into place so remove those and then we'll move on to the ABS sensor itself crusty stuck on there. Doubly crusty. So now we're onto the ABS sensor itself. There's just one 12 millimeter bolt holding this in place. So I'm gonna undo that and then prise it up and out of its housing with this small screwdriver here. Like that. Now you've got to be careful with these things that you don't damage them. There's a little o-ring on there as well you need to be aware of. So I'm just going to tie it carefully out of the way with the caliper. Right we are making progress and the next thing I need to remove is the steering knuckle. So that's this thing right here uh, and it's held in place by three ball joints. One on the upper wishbone here, one on the lower wishbone and then there's the tie rod as well. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ball joints, they're basically spherical bearings uh, that are used to hold various steering and suspension components together due to their ability to articulate in every direction. And they're held in place by a tapered stud, which fits inside a tapered hole. Now, once you tighten these things down, it results in a very, very tight interference fit. So breaking them loose can prove to be a challenge. There are a few tools available to do this, uh, but the one I'm gonna use today is definitely the most simple and it's probably the most reliable as well. What is this magic instrument, I hear you ask? I'll show you. A big lump hammer. But before we break this thing loose, I need to first loosen off the nuts on the ball joints. And on this vehicle, they're held in place by split pins. So I need to remove these first. And my preferred tool for these is, once again, a pair of side cutters. Oh, you know. Why am I not using this thing? Christmas present from my girlfriend. Thanks, Tor. My knees love you. That's one out. So as is quite often the case with these things, especially these smaller ones, uh, they're rusted in there solid and you can't get them out. So what I would do is just forget about them, spin the nuts off over the top of them because it's only soft metal and then punch them or drill them out afterwards. In fact, I may be able to punch this top one out. Two down. Right, so next up I need to crack the nuts loose on these ball joints. So the upper uh, ball joint and the tie rod are 17mm. The lower ball joint is a 23mm. 23mm. Odd size. Might always be a 22mm that's got rusty. Probably gonna have to knock the socket on this because the split pin's still in it. Bottom one last. Okay, now they're cracked loose. What I'm gonna do is back the nut all the way off the stud and then just put it back on for a couple of threads. There's method to this, trust me. In fact, what I might try to do now is punch this uh, split pin out. There we go. Last split pin removed. Good. Right, it's time to break out the big gun. 
And what we're trying to do here is shock these ball joints loose with a good blow from this hammer. So it's important that you strike these in the correct place. Do not strike the ball joint itself anywhere. Always strike the casting that the ball joint is retained in. So right about here, I'm going to start with the tie rod first. So a good blow right here should pop this free. I'm going to hit my camera. I'm taking a different approach because I thought I was going to hit my camera. There we go, that's gone. So now remove the nut. Oh, I forgot to put the nut back in. Oh, look at this. Oh, fantastic. Much better slightly dangerous at the same time. So that's the tie rod taken care of. Next up I'll do the upper ball joint and in actual fact that's already popped loose. I don't know how that happened but I'll take it. I've saved the best for last here because this one does take a beating to get it off so I've moved the camera back a bit so I can get a good swing at it. There she goes. Right, so that's all three ball joints free. So I need to remove this axle nut now uh, and remove the nut from the lower ball joint and then the whole knuckle should just pull off the drive shaft. Axle nut. Lower ball joint. There we go. Okay, we're nearly done with part one of this video because all that's left to do now is remove the drive shaft from the front differential. Uh, now it's held in place by a small C-clip, which you can't see because it's hidden inside the front diff. So they need a little force to pop them out. Uh, I'm gonna use a pry bar for that. Wherever it's gone, I'll find it in a minute. Now it is possible when you remove this shaft that you might lose a little oil out of the front diff or the gearbox. So get a tray down. Uh, if you're concerned, but due to the angle this vehicle's at, I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. Famous last words, but let's find out. There we go, drive shaft removed. Right, there we go, drive shaft has been removed, thus concluding the first video in this little mini series. My next job is going to be to replace this knackered boot here, so if you want to join me for that job, click this link right here. Or if you want to skip that part and jump straight to the installation video, if you've bought a new drive shaft, for example, you can click this link right here. See you in a moment.